Hey everybody, I'm Josh. I'm Jacob. Welcome to another episode of Hey Man. Hey Man. Hey Man. We're back in Vegas um, after a lovely weekend in Miami. Oh, I'm sorry, in Miami. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? I, again, I feel like, I feel like, you know, I feel like I got it. Um, what's up, yeah. man? Uh, what's going on with you, dude? Not much. You, what, what are you doing on your phone? I, I was just looking. Uh, am I the only person in the world who doesn't know who the fuck these people from Vanderpump Rules are. All I know is that they're racist. That's all I got. Racist? Yeah, they got canceled for uh, derogatory comments like a decade ago. The, the, the tweets and the comments came out like, like last year. Yeah, they're all racist. I don't think that's what we're talking about. But you said Vanderpump Rules. The Vanderpump people came out, or not came out, but there was clips that came back and tweets and all of that that came back from their past about some mega racist shit. Google it. I don't know anything about that. I don't know anything about them I know or who they, they are. I know there, there's been like this, there's been an affair. I, I haven't seen anything about racism. It's, again, this was this was previously, like the, the news came out uh, while I was still working on Spade, I think. Oh, dude, so you're, I bring up Vanderpump Rules and you bring up something from four years ago? It's still Vanderpump. It's the Vanderpump people that is relevant. What are you talking about? Yeah, but I don't think it's these people. It. They're part of the Vanderpump family. I'm not saying that it's specifically those dudes. I'm saying that people in the Vanderpump family. Well, here, here's... I don't know how you took that as irrelevant because it was very relevant to what you were talking about. Here's, here's what... <laughs> what? Here's what I'm saying. Like, why'd you get so defensive about that? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm pretty sure that doesn't apply. What do you mean it doesn't apply? Oh, was it well, these people? Because no, but I, it was part of the family. Like, yeah, I get... All right, I guess it's relevant. It's not what I've been... <laughs> I've already thrown a head up for that one. <laughs> it's not what I'm talking about. It's crazy. I, I'm talking about, I guess there was some sort of... You You asked me if I knew anything about the Vanderpump people. You're right. So I brought you're right, up... You're right, you're right. But I, no, there's I'm, an affair. No, I haven't heard anything about okay, them. Okay, so you haven't either. Oh, previ- like right currently right now? Yes. No, no. Okay. okay, that's what I was referring to. Oh, okay. Well, then you just said you don't know who the Vanderpump people are. So that was kind oh, of vague. I said, do you know who the Vanderpump people are? And I replied with, yes, they're racist. <laughs> <laughs> what is happening? <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, that was, I, I'm not, but what I, what I meant by that is I don't want to assign racism to these people because I don't, I haven't heard, I, to be fair, I've only looked at headlines on social because you can't, Avoid it. Yeah, yeah, they're everywhere, and nothing is said racism. It's all about a because it's a different topic now, and probably two different people. Right. I'm pretty sure the racist ones were women. Yes, this is what I was saying. But again, you only asked if I knew who the Vanderpump people were. But But, here, here, so there's an affair happening. This is why are there only two guys on screen? What's going on? This is what's crazy. I don't know because I haven't cared enough to look into it. Look any further than the headline. Yeah. But, but I did, I did, I, this is so fascinating to me where, and this is why, I, I mean, we're doomed as a, as a people, we're doomed. We've been doomed for years. Yo, know, this is a TV show that was about to get canceled uh-huh. that had the fucking worst ratings ever. Uh-huh. And so two people, three, two people who nobody apparently gave a shit about had an affair. Those, and- like those two people together? Oh, a man and a woman had an affair. Oh, okay. Now, I don't know the details of the affair. I don't know if it was salacious, but it must have been. Right. Because now everybody cares. But but that speaks so much to us as a people. You know what I know, like, truth, like about the Vanderpump family? Oh, they have that restaurant in Caesars. That's about it. You know, that giant purple one? Yeah. Well, maybe it's not Caesars, is it? I no, it's... Where did we meet uh, uh, Uncle Steve for dinner that one day? What hotel? Caesars. Oh, then yeah, then it was yeah. at Caesars. It was like right next to like right when you enter in the canal shops. Yeah, right in the there. forum. Yeah, it's that giant purple sign. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. The neon one. That's yeah. that's their restaurant. I don't that's the only thing that for me is relevant about them. And then they're racist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only two things I got. Next question. What <laughs> what what outside of competition? So I know you're a big fan of RuPaul. Love, drag, right? love, love, love drag race. Outside of competition, reality shows. Mm-hmm. Have you gotten into a reality show? Well, I've worked on a lot of, oh, that's like, right. of the Netflix dating shows. Like I worked on the pods for Love is Blind. I worked on Perfect Match. 
Um, you worked. I worked in on the pods uh, on Love Is Blind. Yeah, yeah. So like the so the pods are filmed. I'm pretty sure I can say this for previous seasons because there shouldn't be any reason why I couldn't say this. We about to find out. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, the pods are shot on a soundstage, and right. these right, right. these are the by the way the largest sound stages I've ever seen anywhere. Was that in New Mexico? No, no, no. It was, uh, New Mexico was a completely different, it was like, uh, three offers is what that one was called. And then the show didn't get bought. So we called it zero offers. Um, <laughs> after the show, it got stuck on a hard drive because the post team had quit. So that show three offers has like, it's, it's all, it ended up getting finally like finished and posted, yeah. but like, Two and a half years later, Whoa. but they they changed the name. There was no longer three offers because most of the time the house people who were selling their houses t- didn't get any offers. Oh, it was a it was it a was ha- like a, it was like a Shark Tank for selling your house to investors who would take it and judge it up and make a profit. I think that's actually a pretty cool idea. It's in a step, honestly, I was like, yo, that's not a terrible idea. However, I'm going to tell you why it was a terrible idea. The people they brought on were awful. Not only was there an old racist woman who made a derogatory comment towards two of the people on the panel. Um, By the way, that makes for a bad person and good TV. Correct. Yeah. And also they had that, another older woman who was trying to sell her house, her three-story house in Bakersfield for $3 million. I was, yeah, but you I can was buy like, Bakersfield was, for $3 million. Exactly. I was like, I will give you a slightly used VHS. Like yeah. uh, nothing, nothing more than that because- who in the hell wants to buy a house in the middle of Methville for four million dollars? Like, something. It's the craziest thing. I like how the price of the house just went up by a million. That's amazing. Wait, did I say three or four? You went. You said three the first time, and then four the second. I time. I thought I said four the first time. That's why uh, I said four again. My fault. Uh, but I thought you were going to say slightly used condom, and that would have been hilarious. <sighs> would have been even better. Yeah. Um, and honestly, probably worth more of a price because I, you could probably donate it. What a cool idea! And then I want to get back to the Love Is Blind. Yeah, I it, guess it, it, it was. Cool, a, it was a really great idea. They just it wasn't. Um, can I ask? Done correctly. So they came on, they had pictures of their house, they yeah, gave yeah. a video so, tour. So you know how Shark Tank works where they come out and they have like, uh, they have like, you know, their, their product behind them and they give a pitch, right? So when you, when you came out, like all of the surrounding walls were LEDs. So that was kind of cool. So they could flash photos and whatnot, but also the, I'm going to just say the panel because that's just the only way I can describe them because they're not judges mm-hmm. or sharks, mm-hmm. right? So the people on the panel... Um, had also pictures like in their hands of like what the listing looked like online. So you could see the house in your hand and then they would go over it and give you like a, like another rundown of what you're looking at on paper, uh, like amenities. And they would go over all that. And then they would say, I'm asking for this price. And most of the time they were like, I will give you a million dollars less than that. And the people who were trying to sell would say no. And then they'd leave with nothing. I I think, I think total, I was there for a month and a half, probably. I think out of all the people that were there, I think, maybe four or five people got offers. I think, here's what I think. I think it's missing something. Honestly. Panel, uh, the people on the panel, I would have changed. Yeah, but it's also missing something in the execution. It needs like, because you're just pitching a house, you might as well just go to real, you know what I mean? Like, well, it it's, needs it's, like, it's like pitching I, to investors though, who would then take it put their money in, then put more money in to then double it. It's like they were flipping the houses, but they were trying to figure out what house was worth to even be putting money into. Yeah. I, it, it, I, 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 know, th- I know this isn't it, but it need, it's, needs, to me, it needs something like, this is the house, this is what I think would make this house perfect. Oh, like telling them what they would need to put in kind of thing? Y- yeah, but then that's something. That, I, like I said, it wasn't done correctly. Yeah, it, it's it, off it, a little it bit. It missed some things. But no, when I shot Love is Blind, we were in... Uh, like uh, Valencia, like North Northern uh, Valley, right mm-hmm. in LA, um, and those are the biggest sound stages I've ever seen in my life. Like I've been on the Universal lot, I've been on the Paramount lot, not even close. Okay, these so lo- these these things were like they they looked like when you walked up to them, like they were the size of an arena, like they were just giant. And well, then the, we got the, kicked out of one because Spielberg was shooting next the, door. So the love, <laughs> yeah, I, the, the nah. love is blind. And where they stay, their houses, that's on the soundstage too? No, no, no. So actually, they all stay in hotels, separate hotels. The guys get one hotel, the girls get another because they're not allowed to see each other right, until the proposal. Right, but what's that general living area that they, they shoot in? Oh, they're pods. They're, it's what art department and construction, they literally build pods and then refurbish them. Not the pods. They're, like when they go back and talk at night, when they all come back, they go to a giant room. Oh, it's probably a community room in the hotel. In the because mm. because it's not girls and guys. It's only ever one Yes, gender. right, right, right. So right. it's the guys probably in like a community area, girls, same thing. Um, but also, I've never actually watched Love is Blind, so I have no idea. What yo, there's, that is the, the pod part is good yo, entertainment. Can, can I tell you right now, I started working on the show. I was like, yo, 
This is the greatest name for a team. Like for me, truthfully, the play on words in the title is outstanding. Yeah. Like the whole concept of it is outstanding because you know that 98% of the time, none of this shit is ever going to work out and you're going to get great TV in the fallout. But that 1% of the time that it does work keeps everybody hoping and wanting to come back next season to pick a favorite couple and hope that they work out. Sure. Right. So it, it's, Beautifully executed, like for me, like it's a really think, well done show. I think Love is Blind for me, Love is Blind, like The Voice, like American Idol used to be for me. Yeah, I like the beginning parts, I liked the American Idol auditions, auditions are for sure the best. I part. like The Voice when the chairs are chairs turn, yep, right. And I like Love is Blind when they're figuring shit out, yeah, absolutely. But, but like everything else past that is just a little, yeah, no, you know, it's funny. So, the, the one, so obviously, there's like six or seven couples that make it through the pod round, right? Yeah. And then after that, they go on a honeymoon somewhere, right? Yeah. No, so, we, your mom and I have watched the show. Okay, right. Yeah. I'm just also explaining for yeah, okay, the people okay. listening. So I worked, that first season I worked it, I worked the vacation one. And they were like, we're going to Cabo. And I was like, fuck yeah. Week in, a week and a half in Cabo, working this shit and then doing whatever else. That sounds great. Yeah. And then they were like, JK, we're going to Malibu. And I was like, that is some Boo. shit. They brought us to uh, Calamigos Ranch yeah. up there on Canaan. Beautiful ranch. Like, I really loved it. I also got to drive those little gators around. The How was that? Um, hot. It was like the middle of July. Those gators four wheel. Are yeah, they, they're are, like they're like souped up golf carts. But they're not four on the floor, right? Oh, yeah. They're the all, shift is down here? Oh, oh, oh. Like, no, they're not. They're not. Manual. Manual. No, no. They're automatic. You don't know how to drive a stick. I do not know how to drive a stick. Would you like to learn how to drive a stick? I bet you give me an hour. I could figure it out. Easily. Figure it out? No, like, do it yeah. consistently and not stall every time I switch gears. I, would, I think I think if you gave me an hour, I could do it. I don't even think you can go to a car dealership and buy a stick shift car. Yeah, you can. Can you? Do they sell them on the lots? Subarus. There are some Subarus that are stick, for what, sure. Like the sports car. Yeah. No, the Subaru. Well, yeah, it's it's more of a rally car, not a sports car. It's still a hatchback. But they sell it. They sell a hatchback stick shift on the lot at Subaru. Well, they might. The rally car is a small little RC for me. Yeah, they might. I, I don't know truthfully about that, but I bet you there are some dealerships that still sell manual cars. It's so crazy. Yeah, it I, is. Like most of the time you have to find them used online. Like Riley, my buddy, he had a, a used sign on TC from like 2009 that he had when we were in high school. Remember yeah. that? And that was, that was stick. Well, you could definitely, the stick shift, you could definitely... Spin your wheels and burn. Yeah. That was. Fun. Well, you can do it in a car. Dude, that is I had. A, I did it in your car. What? Your car's not stick. It's called a cold start. You put both your gas, your foot all the way down on the gas, and your foot all the way down on the brake. Stop! 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 You did it in my car. Yeah, in your Lexus, in high school. What? Yeah, like you. You, you know what a cold start is? Yeah, I know what it is, dude. But yeah. What, so what, I, <laughs> what you do? I want because I put it in sport mode and I went to the back street. You know, like the LA River. Sport mode. You didn't know your car had a sport mode? No. It also had a, an eco mode where it would like save gas. How did you, what? There was a dial on right down here that said sport, eco, normal. And so you just. On the car? Yeah. So where your, where your transmission is, right below it, there was a dial and you turned huh. it. It was normal, sport, eco. I don't think I ever turned it. Oh, sport mode was great in that car. Did it go faster? It had a quicker acceleration and your steering wheel, like the, the, the oh, steering tight. tight twi- so you could take tighter turns and whatnot. Tighter um, turns. So I really enjoyed that. But yeah, I would go, you know, that back street by the LA River. Um, so it was late at night and I knew nobody would be there. So I cold start and I, so you I, want, I wanted to see how fast I could go from zero to 60 to, fast, by, by the way, by the way, fast, where were you driving fast in my car in the neighborhood or on the freeway? Did you ever go to that parking lot behind Macy's near the house? Yeah, I did donuts in you and mom's car in the Macy's parking lot <laughs> with her, <laughs> yeah, with her Lexus RX with that big SUV. We'd. Also in both of your cars, which I think is a terrible idea. You should have it in the settings. There was a button also right there by your transmission that could turn cruise control off. Yeah. Which I, again, I think is a bad idea. I think cruise control should be in your settings because you shouldn't really be able to turn cruise control off. I, I love think cruise it's, control. It's great. Yeah. But so when I, I would turn it off, so it would let me spin out the tires because if you had it on, it wouldn't let me spin or drift or go in circles because it would lock up the wheels and just go like in straight circles. You did donuts in our cars? Yeah. I thought I told you this already. No. Oh, yeah, I did. You can go ahead. <laughs> I will tell you By something. the way, for anybody watching, if you see yeah. me raise my, I see us raise our hand, we're, we're putting notes on where we can uh, go look back at this. Listen, dude, can I tell you, the first time I drove, 
Um, my dad and I drove Dan. We, we my oldest, my older brother Dan. My dad and I drove him from Massachusetts to Florida. He was going to Jacksonville, Jacksonville State, State, right? To play baseball, actually. And um, what a great city to choose to call choose to go to college in, Dan. Dan was a a legit baseball player. No, I, I'm sure. No, I'm just saying, like Jacksonville's yeah. a, a rough one. Yeah, but D1 le- legit baseball, you know. Mm. But on the way back, we we were not dealing with a whole lot of money, right? And so I don't think we stayed in hotels. We stayed. He knew had friends and stuff. Maybe we stayed in one hotel. But there was this one. He had been driving like all night, right? And I was, Dan went to college. He was 18. That makes me 14. 14. I was going to say 15, but that okay. was close enough. So we're driving back up from Florida and he's like, I'm real tired. I said, okay, what do you want to do? He said, I'm going to put it on cruise control. And it was, the freeway was pretty empty. It was pretty early in the morning. Right. He goes, I'm going to put it on the cruise control, slide over. You just take the wheel. And if something happens... Let me know, and I'll I'll uh, I'll take over. And I was I said okay because that was super cool, but like thinking back on it, if something happens by the time he wakes up, it's probably gonna be too late, way too late. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like like if you if you yeah. decide to look up and you don't know which one is the gas and the brake, and there's a car coming, you're like, Dad, dude, which one's the brake? I had no control over gas or brake. He was in the driver's seat. Oh, you were just I like was next just to him. Steering. Oh, yeah. So that's my thing is like, if you're like, hey, hit the brake and he decides not to wake up, I think it's way too late. Yeah. I think, yeah, I don't really know what his game plan was. But his was game a, plan was trying to get some fucking sleep. That's was, what the game plan was. It was a different time, man. It yeah, was, absolutely. It was, a, it was a, what, what they let us do, not even let. It wasn't like a let situation. It's just what the world was. Yeah, dude. You know, I mean, think about this. They, at eight years old, you would leave the house on your bike and come back at dinner, no cell phone and just be like, Hey, when the streetlights come on, you better be home. Yeah. It was a little while ago. So they didn't have clocks. You had to use the sun to tell what time it was they during had, the day. We had clocks. Just making sure you didn't have a sundial or anything. Uh, by the way, I wonder if I could figure out a sundial. You put a stick in the ground. Okay. Hold on. I mean, you, for a sundial. What? A sundial. Do you know what a sundial is? Sundial isn't made out of wood. It's made out of stone. No, isn't that like you put the stick in the ground and the sun tells you what time it is? Maybe that's your uh, MacGyver way of doing it or MacGruber, but... MacGruber! Yeah, exactly. But no, the typical sundials were actual things, like giant stone pieces that were carved so you could tell what time it was. When you say typical, you mean from when? You know, Mayans or whatever. Well, the Mayan sundial probably was a little more advanced than the stick in the ground. But I think it's yeah, stick in the... Because it had carvings and markings so it could help you tell what time it was. But I think like, a stick in the ground is the same idea as the more intricate sundial because they're telling just... Because the okay, stick in okay. the ground tells you that by the shade what time it is, I think. Is it the shade or is it the, the how big the shadow is? Because that's what I it's think it Groundhog is. Groundhog Day. No, what? No, because the sun it hits the stick and then however, wherever the shadow is or whatever, it's like right, however right. big it is, you can tell. Oh, that because if it's Thank above, you. there's yep, no. Yep, yep. I would give you, I think, a hundred tries and I think you'd get none of them. To tell what time it is? On a sundial? By the way, we're not talking like general area. Like you got to be within 10 minutes of it. 10 minutes? Yeah. You think the Mayans were within 10? They didn't know what 10 minutes was. Yeah. Fucking, what are you talking about? Yeah, they didn't know what 10 minutes yeah. was. Well, you got to give me an hour. Well, then you got to use the stick in the ground method. That's the only method I know. You could just go find a regular sundial somewhere. Where would I find a sundial? I'm going to find out right now. Google how a <laughs> sundial works. Because now <laughs> yeah, I want to know. I'm curious also. Do you think, I think, hmm, hmm. I think it's the, sh- you think it's the length of the shadow. I think it's, I the think size it's of where the shadow. the shadow is. But the la- that would make sense, the length of the shadow. But, but like, so if you, if you, okay. I'm, I'm listening. I'm listening. Sun here, <laughs> stick here. Thank stick you, comes down, sun comes down, no shadow, makes it high noon. One o'clock, beep. Yeah, I think it's the position. You think it's the position position of the shadow? I think so. 
Because at one point when it's west, thank you, sir. At one point when it's west, because it goes a, like this, correct, right? Correct. And so I think it's the position. Also, I mean, it, it'll have a little more length for sure. Okay, are we here? You ready? You want I'm to ready? Yeah, yeah. A sundial contains a gnomon, and I'm going to assume that's how oh, it's spelled. Oh, okay. N. Nope. Gnomon is not spelled with an N. It's not, it doesn't start with an N. G. Yep. Ooh, a gnomon? Yeah, that's that's why I was like, I think that's a gnomon because right, there's a G be in front of it. G-N-O-M-E-N. G-N-O-M-O-N. Gnomon. Gnomon, yes. So, by the way, it contains a gnomon. I'm gonna, or, that's your new nickname. I love it. Do you want to know what it stands for? Or a thin rod, which was my nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> that casts a shadow onto a platform etched with different times. I'm oh, sorry, I also want to put my hand up for that. That that one liner. Okay. Um, as the sun changes relative positions over the course of a day, the rod's shadow changes as well, thus reflecting the change in time. So it's it's where the shadow is. But so that's what I'm saying. Like a clock. I almost think every that's su- probably how they decided to make a clock. Almost every sundial has two basic parts: the pointer and the dial. The pointer, also called a style or gnomon, casts a shadow indicating the time of day. The numbered dial is in the area in which the shadow falls, showing the hour. Right. So yeah, it, honestly, like, out sans, like, like if you just look at this, that looks like a clock. Right, but sans clock, you just get a stick, same deal. Yeah, but I I, I still don't think you get it right. Within an hour, I wouldn't be able to get minutes because it's it just has the one duty lead. No, yeah, I would. Because I could draw the circle. That's what you do is you draw the circle and then I'd really like to test your test this out and see if you can actually figure it out. Fuck yeah, I love this idea. We'll just go in the middle of the desert. Because we live in Vegas. Yeah. Lots of sticks, lots of dirt. Works out well. Dude, saw my first snake. Where? I was walking. We have in- more things to talk about, but this is important. I want to hear about this. I was walking in Indiana. Do you know what kind of snake? Long. <laughs> That's t- Long Did you snake. take a photo? No. Why? Because I wanted to get the fuck out of there. Right. But I, you know me. I'm like fucking I'll, Steve I'll Irwin take, over I'll here. take a picture of the next one. If you see one. I will. You've I'm been sh- here for over. First snake we've seen. Yeah. Almost two years. Yeah, Indiana was like, hey, let's go fuck around with that snake. No. And I was like, no. By what, the way, dude. What color? Dark brown? Uh, yeah, it was brownish. Did it have diamonds on the back of it? Did you see any patterns on it? I'm going to go diamonds? ahead. Diamonds? Yeah, yeah, because it could be a diamondback rattlesnake because their patterns on them look like diamonds. So Did they're you called diamond The rattlesnakes are now getting Not, rid of their rattles? Yeah, because they are starting to evolve. So rattlesnakes are now no longer using their rattle to alert you when you're near them because it's giving away their position to predators. Do you know who is developing rattles? Non-poisonous snakes. That's they fucked. found that it's because the, the evolution, it scared people off. So now non-poisonous snakes are being able to use it. Oh, what a it mind is. fuck this is. Wait, so you're telling me if I come across a rattle, it's not a rattler? It that's, probably still is. That's so fucked. I don't think they've evolved out of the rattle entirely, but I do find it fascinating, dude. I'm not going to lie to you. I do find it fascinating. I, in my lifetime, I always wanted to be around to see part of evolution. Oh, this is do here. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's I oh, think it's that's here. super cool that yeah. you we're at a point now where we're starting to witness a little bit of evolution. I think that's super cool. It is pretty dope. It, but it also is fucking terrifying. Yeah. Because now the next thing we're going to see is bugs that didn't have wings now grow wings and be able to fly. And that's what I'm not excited for. I will tell you this. Like I, when, when regular everyday cockroaches grow wings and all of them can fly, I'm out. I do this. You know who, you know who else is out? Mom. Mom. Yeah. <laughs> those flying cockroaches. One of her biggest fears. Those flying cockroaches are a big, yeah. fat, no, no, no for yeah, me. I'm good. I'm good. Um, I, I, but, but we did see our first snake. I have not seen a coyote on our walks in a minute, man. In a minute. Probably scared of the snakes. I don't think so. I think they no, probably I'm eat just, them. Yeah. Ah! Well, I mean, they probably might attempt to, but if a rattlesnake gets one bite on a coyote, you've seen what rattlesnake venom does to blood? He, uh, I don't need to. I don't it think. coagulates it. Mm-hmm. So if you were to have a little Petri dish of human blood and drop venom into it, it would solidify it. Yeah, that So it pretty terrible. much forms a clot yeah. in your bloodstream. It's fucked. That, that Dude, rattlesnake venom is... Do you know okay. what I saw in the desert? Other than a snake? It looked like a watermelon growing near our house. And I was like, what the fuck? You sure it's not a cactus? Brother, a, it looked like a... You know those little round seedless watermelons? It was yeah. this big. It was a, It's a gourd for sure. It was growing near our house. And I called grandma because, you know, grandma... You used to have a garden. 
not it, to call it a garden. Yeah, yeah, not any garden. It was like a fucking Narnia. Like, yeah. you'd walk out of the back of their house and you'd see this lovely little 80 year old woman just walk you into this place of magic. Yeah, and she, had, she had she had so much stuff that she would just do on her own. She had she had a beehive where she would send us honey. Like, that, yeah, chickens. That, that, that woman's extraordinary. But also, like, ev- fruit trees and vegetables, and like, she, they call it a garden, is doing it a distance. She did that next family who moved in a huge favor, but I guarantee you they couldn't keep it up to par as well as she yeah, did. No, they already got rid of it. Are you serious? What a waste. Like, she was you a could little just, bummed out. You she, could just grow that and feed your family and not have to go to the store. Dude, like, do you, you know what, what she did? Waste. She used to give her, because, you know, her and she my had too dad, much. Couldn't eat all that. Yeah. She so donated? She used to give the fresh produce to the restaurants in town so they could have fresh produce for their organic. Uh, that's awesome. Produce I for, love their, that. for their. And she wouldn't take any money. She'd just walk in and give Dude, it to you. Let me tell you something how extraordinary my she mother is. is ready an for this? extraordinary human being. So is Tom do, Wolf, by do, the way. You know what I found out about her that I didn't know? She could dunk a basketball? She was protesting in Boston in the 50s. Oh, 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 yeah. Pre- you did tell me civil this. rights. She was protesting black people's rights. There was a place called Woolworth and they wouldn't serve them at the counter. Yeah. She was protesting in the 50s in Boston. Yeah. And I just found Rock that on, out. Grandma. I just found that out about her. And I asked her, I'm like, why? Why isn't this something that I knew about you? And she was like, you never asked. I'm like, did I need to ask specifically if you protested for civil rights in the 50s in Boston? I mean, yeah, actually, that's a pretty specific question. Yeah, it's such Because a, how does that come up in conversation if you're not talking about it? Uh, Do you know what I'm saying? Like, here's, random my, thought, here's, here's my point is that, like, I yeah, there's no I clip that one too because I want to shout out grandma on Instagram for There that. was no way to, but, 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 um, it's so crazy, you know, as my parents get older. I find myself asking them more and more questions. Right. Because I want to know everything I need to know or should know, or I just want to know, I want to know them. As much as you can. Yeah. Yeah. I understand that. I want to know that them makes as much complete as I can. sense. Yeah. I'm with you a lot on the road. I don't need to ask you any more questions. Yeah, I mean, you. Plus, you're not that old yet. So it's the first time I haven't called you old. I said not that old. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, what, what, what would you want to know? I don't know. I hear a lot of your stories that I'd probably ask about through your comedy. So there's a lot of that. Yeah. Like I would ask about probably a, a crazy like uh, story. Like if you went on a holiday with some buddies, but I know that one already. Yeah. Um, I know your bachelor party s- story about planning that, which is why you're not invited to mine. Yeah. Um, I think most of my questions wouldn't be like intellectual questions. They, you, you know also- what I'm saying? Like they would be like, like if I asked you what protesting you did for civil rights at any point in time in your life, I don't think, well, we that, did the Black Lives Matter stuff. Well, yeah, in, yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in LA. I got tear gassed. Uh-uh. I didn't? You did voluntarily. Well, you, I wanted to see what it felt like. Yeah, you weren't out there with them when they got tear gassed. Yep. You, went out, you went out after hearing that they had been tear gassed to see what it felt like. That's different. I went out to get tear gassed. Correct. All the people protesting didn't. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. I went out to protest. I came back in. They started to get tear gassed. Oh, oh, I didn't hear that. For, you never told me that first part. They started I, to get, I, I, and it wasn't like a, they started to get tear gassed. And then um, I was like, I missed tear gas. <laughs> You're like any bro ever who's like, oh, I can handle pepper spray. And he's I, really drunk and then I, gets I, up and takes it to the face and just cries. I did not think that I could take it, but I also didn't think it would have hurt as bad as it did. I didn't like, know what here, I thought. Here's my thing. You know it hurts, and you know it's uncomfortable. Why voluntarily run into it? How do you know it hurts? Some people are immune to it. Says who? 100%. Some people, when you pepper spray them, it doesn't affect them. I've seen people not be affected by a taser. But that that's, always fucks me up. Yeah, when you once, see people just walk right through it, you're like, yo. Not even walk through it. Like I saw this one guy who was in an argument with cops, and he was smoking a cigarette. And I think he was out of uh, the transient community. And... He was like, and he was like pointing the cigarette at him and he was like, you better stay away from me. And the cop's like, don't come any closer. And the dude takes one step, cop shoots him with a taser and he looks down at it and then just like pulls it off of him. And he's like, that's the best you got. And I'm like, oh my goodness. What? Yo, dude. That is a scary. That's a scary human being. I wonder if there's a certain body type. I would think that very muscular people, it would, it would work really well on. Yeah. Because there's no fat to absorb it because it just goes straight to your muscles. Yeah. But Grant, I've also granted s- this person who I saw in that video was of uh, a larger descent. Yeah. I've, but I've also a larger descent, a uh, larger body type. Sorry, that's the wrong word. 
Um, I what was I looking up? Uh, uh, would you look up what tear gas? Tear gas. Yeah, some people because you know in the military, like your brother got, you got to take your mask off. And then you have to be able to... There are some people who are naturally tolerant of CS gas. A suggested 2 to 5% of the world's population is resistant, with a large percentage of those being of Eastern, East Asian descent. A mix of both genetics and exposure to an active ingredient in the gas helps build tolerance. I am neither Eastern Asian. I'm Southeast Asian. Oh, yeah. Technically. Yeah, for sure you yeah. are. So, but I will not be testing that. Let's test it. No. No, let me. Spray. You go first. I already did it. No, no, no but not with me. Pixar let didn't me spray you in the face with some. Fuck no. How is that? E- like, by the way, this is the type of podcast that you're listening to, where a father is trying to persuade his son to pepper spray him. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't do I it. I didn't even need to raise my hand for that. He reached over and marked it right there. I, I wouldn't do it, but I would find someone to do it to you. Aren't you even? Because I was just curious. Aren't you even no, curious? Not even a little bit. Well, you know why? Because with my luck, also with my asthma, yeah, you should. With my, yeah, with just like my past medical conditions, yeah. uh, I think that is a horrid I th- idea. I think you're right. I think you're right. I, I, I like I one of the per- worst ideas. I am a person who wants to experience everything in life, including the bad things. Yeah, not all the bad things, but like some of them. Some of them. I've always been curious when I've seen people on TV. I was always like, "What does that feel like?" I have never wondered once because it looks painful as all hell. Yeah. That's where my... There was a lot of fluid coming out of my orifices. Just my face, my said. facial orifices. Sure. I, facial I, I would assume, I would assume you probably were crying a whole bunch. You probably had a runny nose and you were probably trying to cough up a bunch of shit. So a hell of a lot of saliva. It wasn't great. I will say that... It sounds terrible. That... It sounds like eating something super spicy, except it's like you touched it and then you rubbed it in your eye and then it's in your eye. It was a little more than spicy. Yeah. No shit. Do you remember when I did that Josh Wolf's Wonderful World of Weird? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I ate that like bull testicle soup. Yeah, you also had leeches on your butt. On my butthole, yeah. Yeah. That actually didn't feel that terrible. Yeah, apparently neither did waxing your butthole. Waxing butthole felt pretty good. But leech... Whoa, pause. It did. It felt like a, it was like a refresher course. hoo um, Nope. But the leech on the butthole, yo, dude, uh, the person who was in there before me got a, had a leech on their eyeball. I've seen that. F- I, fuck that. By the way, fuck no to leeches too. Like what? Well, they're supposed to suck the impurities out of you. That's what she said. Yeah, I was going to say, I've but feel like, I feel like a lot of dudes have been told that before. I will tell not you. With, not with they, leeches. They... I do see some of it. I believe some of it. I don't. Here's the part. I do believe they say that leeches are great for hemorrhoids. This makes a lot of sense to me. Makes sense why they put it on your butthole. Well, they should put it on, on where, where a hemorrhoid is. Right. Cause then it, and it sucks. Loosens it out. the swelling. It, yeah. That it not loosens the swelling. It sucks it completely out of your body. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It sounds like, it sounds like it'd be painful. Like passing a kidney stone. I, I've never had a hemorrhoid. I have. You have. Yep. Probably when I was like 21. Can Something I like ask that? a question? Yeah. Is the hemor- is a hemorrhoid on your butthole? Yep. It's on your butthole? It was like, so you know, obviously it's a circle, right? So it's like on the rim. I don't know if that's obvious. I've never seen a hemorrhoid before. No, a butthole. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? How's- okay. okay. Anyway, yeah, right. so it's like it's like a circle, right? So it's like kind of like it's on the rim. And And how did you know? Did you get a mirror under there? No, you can feel it. No, but like, how did you know what it looked like? Did you take a look at it? No, I just... Uh, you didn't look at it ever? No, there was just one day where I was, uh, like, I was, I was right before I had to use the bathroom. I was like, that, that hurts a weird amount. So I, I just did a, I did a field test and I went, I was like, I was like, oh, that's a bump. And I was like, oh, that's probably what I think it is. I didn't and, know it's not a zit. Because it, one, I've never had a zit on my butthole, but I also know what a zit feels like. Right. And right. it did not feel like that. Have you ever gotten it back? No. Nope. Because don't they come back? If if you proceed to keep doing the same things you were doing. What does that mean? Why do you, you know get if you them? if you push too hard when you poop? Oh. It's pretty much like it's pretty much like, you know, when you push too if you push too hard, prolapse can happen. What? Prolapse is when your asshole flips. I know out. what it is. Yeah. So you can't you can't push too hard when you poop or else it or else prolapse happens. Somebody so wait, I th- wait, so, how hard are you pushing where your complete asshole comes out? Very. 
Like I assume it happens to a lot of people who have constipation. Zero percent chance that somebody pushes so hard that their butthole comes out. It's probably not all in one sitting. It's if you push too hard when you poop regularly. Like if you push hard every time you poop, you might just hit it. Your, your butthole hits a breaking point. Do you, no know what look, you know when I, those prolapse assholes, you know what they look like when they come out? They look like that party favor that and yeah, it just kind of <laughs> Yeah, and it looks like the top of an unripe tomato. Oh my god! Yeah, but so yeah, so that happens, and then uh, after that, I, I just just had to, you know, be more patient. Did you apply? Pepper? Nope. No, nothing. Nope. I just let it go away naturally. Did it hurt enough where you were like, I would use a leech right now? I, there was there were some points where I was like, Yo, this is, this just hurts. Like even like just going to the bathroom regularly, and you're like not trying to do anything and just sit there. Anything that happens is painful. I guess I've never been a pusher. There's an Alt J song called "Are You a Pusher or a Puller?" and I think we know which one you and me are. I'm the pusher. That oh, was the joke. Well, oh, okay. And you're the puller. What's that song about, pusher or puller? Uh, it's actually it's actually a really like light melodic song. Um, it's like, are you a like do you push people away or do you pull them closer? Oh, oh like, uh, are you a pusher or are you a puller? Right. That's what that song's about. That. Some fascinating. I never told you that I have one of those. No, we've talked about everything. That I guess is one of them that we haven't. Yeah, and and the more you know. Let's find a leech person. Nope, not a single chance. I'm good now. Uh, Don't get me in. Don't put. You're not putting a leech anywhere near my butthole. I did it for the show. I won't do it for shit. I'm trying to think about the things that I've done for TV for content, not even TV, just content. Period. Well, this. For content, yeah, but for TV, I think I've done more. Extra- I ate a live cockroach. Yeah, you ate a bull testicle. You had leeches on your butt. You had, I mean, for you counted family tussle stuff too. Sure, you got a tattoo. You got your butthole waxed. Um, I swam with sharks, and I don't know how to swim. Yeah, that yeah. was pretty stupid. <laughs> that was dumb. You got stabbed in the chest by a knife wearing chainmail. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I've eaten maggots. What else have you done? Um, a lot. You've done like what I what I love about it most is that you are a full commit to the bit for the for TV, and I I admire that a lot because there are a lot of things I'd have been like, fuck no, get somebody else to do it, or a stunt double. It's not going to be me. I'm a full commit because, like I said, man, I want to just be like, I did that. Yeah, I understand. I I understand your logic, but there are some things for me that I'm just there's a line. And is that leeches on the butthole is one of them, and that's a hard line, or a flaccid one, either one. Yeah, that that is a that's a definite line for me. Also, apparently not, because <laughs> you crossed that line. I'm years trying ago. to think like if there's ever been anything where I was like, nah, I'm not gonna do that. Trying to think if anybody's ever been like, are you going to? And I've been like, nah, I don't want to do that. Here's the thing, You've, you're even full commit to the bit when it's not for TV. Like that balut egg when I was a kid that you ate. Oh yeah, I ate a balut egg too. For fun at our house. Yeah. You know well, what? It wasn't fun. I mean, no, you, I mean, you did it like yeah. for fun yeah. or amusement. One of those. Um, but I, we were at uh, Seafood City yesterday, two days ago, two days ago, because for some reason, Target and Trader Joe's and Albertsons and Walmart don't sell chili oil for some reason. Hmm. Um, and so I, we were looking for it because I was making my girlfriend uh, like a spicy vegan ramen and it needs chili oil to be spicy. Mm-hmm. So we went to a seafood city. Right as I walked in, there was a sign that said fried balloon eggs, three ninety five, three ninety five an egg. And I was like, were no you, shit. Tell me where that is. Seafood city. It's right next to the Trader Joe's on Eastern. No shit. And the Jollibee. Yeah, that seafood city is like an Asian market where they have full fried, like full fried fish with the scales and the head still on in there. They have live lobsters, which I don't see in any any yeah. grocery store nowadays anymore yeah. like it that place is the real deal i told you man i, I love to seafood city to me awesome. like authentic asian like to me i told you this like to me if i go to a chinese restaurant i don't i don't want like a super clean i yeah. want i want when i walk into a yeah. chinese place i want it to look like the opening scene from gremlins Kind of misty. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. I want like I want like what is that? I want to see. A, to... I want to see an old Chinese woman teaching her grandson math. Yeah. by the cash register. I want to not be able to read the menu for sure. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I want this like, place to feel like I might have explosive diarrhea, and it might be the best place of food I've ever had. Agreed. Like it's funny. My girlfriend and Amon and I were talking about that two days ago. Like we're looking for a good Indian food place, right? And I, I like 
Look, if I go past an Indian spot and it's like the Taj Mahal Indian Palace, dude, I'm not going there because I know it's run by a bunch of white people. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? I want to go to a place where... Well, you want it run authentic. Authentic, authentic. For sure. For I think sure. we found that spot. That's why... I think I, we found it when we went to do our claw machine date. Look, it was right next door to it and there was a line outside of like like legit Indian families and yeah. I was like, oh, that's the place we want By the way, go. and everybody, don't at me on this, but I'm going to tell you something right to your fat fucking faces. Listen, dude, I, when I'm in Los Angeles... I don't want a Japanese dude making my Mexican food. And I, I don't. No, no, no. No, no, no. I, hit, I, me, I, hit me with authentic as we can get. Yeah. Do you yeah. know what I mean? That that place next door to my apartment that I used to live at before this house, right? Remember that little taco shack right next to us? Nobody spoke English. They only had pork on the That's menu. It. That's what they, I want. they had pork, only had pork on the menu and cash only. Yo, that place smelled so good. Never. Uh, I, I tried it once. There was a sauce there that was ridiculous, like way too spicy. Not, not as spicy as the one in Miami. Dude, that was so funny. No. Uh, we Okay, so we were in Miami. Where were we? Miami. Thank you. Uh, and uh, there was this little like street food uh, market, I'll call it, near us, near our hotel. Yeah. Uh, in the Wynwood area. By the way. We, we're going to talk about that oxtail in a second. Uh, have we not talked about that yet? No, oh, we might have in the Miami podcast. I think we did. In the, Yeah, I think we did. When we did. Yeah. Um, but... And I probably talked about this sauce also in that podcast, but I'm going to do it again just for you all that are listening or missed last week's episode. Yep. Miami or Miami. I don't think we talked about it. Okay, great. Then I get to talk about it. Oh, I think I talked about it on stage. That's where it was. That's what it was. Yep. I went up to get, you know, by the way, all the food looked great. There was an oyster bar and there was tacos and there was, there was, there was, there was a little bit of everything. There was uh, drip coffee. Like there was anything you could think of was at that spot. And I walked past a birria taco stand, which birria is like shredded beef for any of those who don't know. And it's like soaked and marinated in like a, in like a chili and a whole bunch of different shit, right? And for me, that, that smells like home. And when I think of home, I think of Los Angeles because that's where I live my entire life. And for me, there are no, there's no better place to get a taco in Los Angeles than off of a street corner from someone who's making it. That out of context sounds weird. But when you go to LA, you'll understand it. It's good. They're called street tacos. Right. Yeah. Because it's legitimately... People on the side of the road cooking and making everything from scratch, tacos for everyone. And they are, I'm no joke, the best tacos you will have when you're in LA. Better than any establishment, better prices than any establishment. The horchata is always usually grand, uh, abuela's recipe. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's the real deal. Like you're getting a, a family meal right there. And I heard crunchy beardia tacos. And I was like, oh, that is going to taste like home. And so I got them. And by the way, fire. So good. And he goes, you want everything on him? I go, yeah, yeah. And he goes, even the spicy sauce? And he looked at me like he was <laughs> like he was asking somebody the wrong question. I go, well, he's like, gringo friendly? And he goes, and he laughs at me. And he goes, no. And I was like, great. Throw some on the side for me, just in case. Because I feel like it's a guy mentality thing. When you're like, oh, it's not. Like, you wouldn't be able to do that. It's like, fuck you, buddy. I bet you I can't. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so he hands it to me. And it's like, it's like, a, it's like a pinkish blood red color. Like it is like a like a deeper blood red. And I'm like, oh, that's gonna be that's probably gonna be tingly. And so before I put it on my tacos, I just dip a little pinky in and put it on my tongue. How fast did I start crying? It was pretty quick. Immediate. Yeah. Involuntarily yeah. crying eating these tacos. Yeah. I was too stunned to speak. Like it I couldn't explain how hot it was. But had I put any of that more than what I had on my tongue on that taco? your boy would have had a freak out. Yo, dude, that... Because you did it, too. It was pretty hot. It was muy caliente. It was pretty, it was pretty hot. Yeah, no it was... It. Uh, yeah, so, but then I walked back up to the guy. I go, yo, is this just like a typical Miami sauce? Like, is this like your base for you guys? He's like, yeah. And I'm like, what is this sauce called? The devil's asshole? Yeah, like, not good. No, nah, it was It was rough. It was... That was a rough, uh, rough experience. Dude, you know, you know, for me, this is... It's, it's like weird lines. I don't want to do the one chip challenge. When no, I say, no, no, I don't. When I, don't want I to do it say either. that I would do anything, I'm out of the. I've aged out of wanting to do things that hurt. I remember that day when you came back and you were like, "Yeah, I just said I'd do the one chip challenge on a Sports Nation." Yeah, and I was like, "What?" You were like, "Yeah, well, what's the problem?" I go, "You don't know what the one chip challenge is, do you?" Yeah, and he didn't at the time. But I aged out I, of wanting, and pain. I showed you those videos. Yeah, that's ter terrible. And how lucky did you get? What happened? I forget. The show was got like, canceled. No, there was like a natural disaster. So it wasn't like, that's what it was. 
Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, thought yeah. it was just the show, like something happened. Well, maybe something no, happened. Beatle to- called me and was like, we can't do the show today. I forget exactly what it was, but I will tell you, yeah. man, you know, you know one thing I was I was talking to your mom about today? That I didn't and I remember I, I just said that this made me think of this because I said I don't want to do things with pain anymore. I didn't think I'd enjoy getting older as much as I do. Okay. I really, like at your age, I was like, what the fuck am I going to do at 50? Holy shit. I hopefully retired. Didn't think that I would enjoy this age as much as I do. I really, and I didn't think I would like it so much more than being younger. And I do. Why? Because is it more, is it just more or less like there's, I feel like there's more expectations when you're younger. To well, be able to mount to something. Well, By the way, you know that chest has armrests. That chair has armrests, right? Reach back. I know. I've been watching you struggle uh, all show. And um, I'm like, ah, I'm just going to wait for a good time to tell them. <laughs> I, I, it's interesting you say that. It's expectations. I don't know if it's expectations, but it's expectations you put on yourself. Right. I know that you, I know as you, as I start to get older, I just realize what's important, what's not important. Um... I don't, it's such a weird, it's, I'm so much calmer hmm. and, and, um, except when you drive, I'm dude, I'm so calm when I drive, except for that one thing when we were in the car earlier, when you freaked out when that guy took a slow right turn I, and then I, sped I, up past him for sure did not freak out maybe a little bit, not even a little just attack. compared to what just, I used to do. Just, Oh, like that dude in the Jetta you followed for two miles and almost got out of your car when I was like 12. Yeah, that's right. But there was a... There that's was me a, now, by the, the way. There, yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I don't miss that. I don't miss that at all. I don't like that I'm an angry driver, but I just wish you guys would know how to drive. That's my only thing. Yeah. How did some of you get your drivers? Like, truthfully, I when I'm driving around, I'm like, yo, how did you pass your driver's test? And I also think that every 10 years, you should retake your driver's test. That's interesting. Because, and also, truthfully, I know some people are going to hate this. They should add parallel parking back to the driving test. It's not on the driver's test? At least when I took mine 10 years ago. Do you, do you know when I was taking my driver's test, right? Um, the guy, I took my driver's test and um, the guy, you know, you would go and you took driving lessons. Okay. I, I and, did that. And the guy that I took driving lessons with was just a dude who a lot of my friends and people in my high school took a driving. So he was like this older guy. When I say older, at the time, he seemed old as fuck, but he was probably 35. <laughs> and um, he knew everybody. Right. And he was like he was like the center of gossip because everybody sat in the car and talked to this older dude. Right? So he knew everything. And he knew there was this girl, I think her name at the time. I think her name, and, and when I say at the time, it probably still is. Yeah. But her name was Jen Youngblood. Her, wait, wait, wait. Her last name was Youngblood? Yeah, Jen Youngblood. I love that. That is hard as fuck. Have you never heard the last name Youngblood? No, you know you know what the only thing I heard Youngblood from is like Dr. Drew uh, or Uncle Drew when like Kyrie dressed up as the old guy and yeah. the guy's reaching. He goes, don't reach Youngblood and then drives to the hoop. Like, oh, yeah, that's the only reason I thought Youngblood. You said Dr. Drew. I'm like, what is that? I, I, I mixed up Dr. Dre and Uncle Drew in um, the same sentence. Yeah, Uncle Drew. Oh, yeah, so all I know is up all I know is don't reach Youngblood. I, I say that when I play basketball. Like if I drive by somebody, I'll this, look back at him. So I was trying to go on a date with this girl. I had very, I didn't, I was not popular with the ladies in high school. And, um, I was trying to get this girl to go out with me. And so during our, my driver's test, I forget what the guy's name, but he was talking to the guy who was giving the test. Yeah. Josh is he was trying to go out with this girl, Jen, but she. She's going to end up going out with somebody who's more popular and a little older and t- talking all this stuff, right? And I was trying to parallel park and I hit the curb. And I was like, fuck. And we got back to the to where I took the test. The guy was like, I'm going to pass you. I go, yeah. He goes, good luck with Jen. I was like, thanks, dude. Damn. He felt so he, bad for he me. Pity, he pity passed you. Yeah, dude. I'll That's take the a, pity pass. I mean, every now and then, I think everybody needs a pity pass. What car did you take your test in? The one that I failed or the one that I passed? Did you fail your first one? Yeah, remember I failed my first one because speaking of a curb, when I he the it, I think the driving test is so weird. They wanted me like we turned around the corner, 
had me pull up to a curb, back straight on the curb, probably just make sure I didn't hit it or I pulled up the right amount. Mm -hmm. And then he just had me pull away from the curb and keep driving. So when I pulled away from the curb, I didn't look over my shoulder and check my blind spot, but I checked my rear view and my side view mirror and I was good to go. And right as I took off from the curb, he was like, turn back around. And I was like, what? He goes, we're going back to the to the DMV. I was like, man, shortest, shortest ace ever on this test. And we got back and he was like, so I failed you automatically. And I was like, what? And he was like, yeah, you didn't look over. He just, he's like, you didn't look at any direction to pull away from the curb. And I was like, that is a bold faced lie. And so when I took the driving test the second time, I think they were both in your car. Yeah. When I took that driving test the second time, he was like, pull away from the curb. And I was like, okay, hold on. Stuck, I like stuck my head out the window yeah, and I like was like, hold dog. on, hold on. I just got to make sure I got to make sure. Uh, oh, overzealous about it. And he was like, you good? I go, yeah, this is how I failed the first time. I'm just, <laughs> just making sure I don't do it a second time. Do you remember sticking your head out the window on the freeway? And you freeway getting pulled over? And me getting pulled over by it the It wasn't cop? on the freeway. It was as we got off the freeway. I uh, know it was as we were getting on the freeway. No. Was it? No, we were exiting on Woodman to go to our house. Oh. And we took a right off of the exit. And I remember this vividly. And right off that right was a car wash. Yeah, so yeah. I, I had my head out the window as we turned right and we're going down Woodman. And a highway patrol happened to be coming out of the car wash as we passed them. And legit, as we passed them, I stuck my head inside and do. You used to like to That's stick your head out the police. window. You used I, to like to stick your head out the window like a golden retriever. I still do sometimes. Like if I'm in the passenger seat, like sometimes I just like the great, I just like window in my face. So I just like lay my head on the window and just let the wind hit me. Um, Dude, you are, uh, by the way, this weekend in Miami was fantastic. Thank you all for coming out. Um, we are, I'm taking a couple weeks off. Woo. We're going into LA next week to do a bunch of podcasts to promote this podcast. And I'm going to Disneyland. And then we're yeah. going to Columbus. 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think those June. tickets are already going pretty fast. Um, my July dates, our July dates and August dates are going up um, this week. Sweet. And, um, all I know is end of July, we're in Tampa. Beginning of July, we're in Tampa. Oh, I thought it was end because at beginning of August, we're in Orlando. Orlando. You sure it's not end of July? Yeah, I think Pretty it's Pretty sure like, it's end of July. I think it's third week in July. Mm, I think the end of July, we're in, um, New Jersey at the stress factory. When are we going back to the Mall of America? Uh, do you want to? I can book that. Dude, those were great shows. Hold you remember how second. much fun we had there? I still haven't yet to do what I want to do while staying there. What does that mean? And if you're security at the Mall of America, if you see me, don't say shit. All right? And you're listening to this. Hold on uh, a second. Because the comedy club is in is in the mall, right? In the Mall Tampa, of America. July 7th and 8th. Oh, first week it is. Okay, but so the Mall of America, for those of you who don't know, is the largest mall in North America. And when I say largest mall, you're like, how big could a mall be? Seven stories. There's an amusement park inside of it. There's Seven also- Seven stories? Or five stories. It's something fucking absurd. Yeah, it's big. And there's a theme park in it. There's a roller coaster, multiple roller coasters. It's like- and there's like a gazillion stores, but it's so awesome. But the comedy club is also in the mall, right? And our hotel is directly linked to the mall. Yeah. But every time we come out of that late show, the mall is closed. And there's nobody there. Yeah, it's so pretty great. I just want to wander around an empty mall. And we do. No, no, no. I mean, like, take an hour and just walk around the empty mall. We usually just walk right back to the Radisson Blue. Yeah. But I want to, I literally legit want to just walk around the empty mall. How come? What is it you want to? I don't know. It just seems like a cool movie moment. Like I would put on headphones and just walk around an empty mall, just like jam in or like dancing on benches. You know, it's, it feels like a footloose moment. You know what we do? Did? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You know, you know, one thing we did on the road when we were driving back from Arkansas to Oklahoma that I really liked on my phone, guys, I have a, um, a playlist that is, that is just songs oh, that yeah, yeah, kind yeah. of put me, it's a movie track playlist. Yeah. So when I hear it, it puts me in different scenes. Right. And um, you and I sat there and talked about how we felt or what we thought we would see ourselves in this scene with that song. And it was cool how different. Yeah. Each song, like I would hear a song and be like, oh, I see a person doing this and this. And then this song comes on and you would have a completely, completely different. Yeah. I really, that was kind of yeah. interesting. Yeah. That was kind of fun. I, I, I've, listened, I've heard a couple songs recently and I'd be like, oh, this should be on the movie playlist. Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you should it, send them to me. Yeah, you? I will. It's pretty. Yeah, it's been uh, running in my mind. 
Um, I do want to do my sneaker thing while we're here. Because oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We just and do then we should get out of here. Yep, yep. We're getting out of here already? It's been an hour. No shit. We didn't yeah. get to anything because we, we plan on talking what about. What did we plan on talking about? Well, we plan on talking about Messi going to Miami. Okay. Um, Going where? To enter Miami. Where? <sighs> enter Miami. I Thank keep you. forgetting. Yeah. Um, I'm going to need a Messi Miami FC jersey, by the way. Yeah. 100%. Um, they're pink. So, yeah. Um, what else? See, I don't even remember what we were going to talk about. Oh, I wanted to do this because I'm going to do it. I'm going to do my shoes, but then also... Shout, I don't even need to show the logo. Shout out Dutch Bros. This is the best place to get a coffee or a drink, a refresher, whatever you want. This place has got it. Why, why, Spons- do, you like, why do you Dutch like- Bros sponsor me? Why, um, why are you like... <laughs> be the best sponsorship of all time. Why you I, like- I could die happy. Why do you like Dutch Bros? Just because the amount of options that they have. Like, you can get a coffee with a bunch of different shit. But they also have every flavored syrup you could think of. So a lot of their Dutch sodas aren't actually sodas. It's just sparkling water with syrup in it. So I remember that I, I get one called the grape and it's a bunch, three different fruits mixed up together that tastes like grape. Oh, all right. So it's like it's strawberry, blue raspberry and passion fruit. And it tastes like grape. I also love passion fruit. So that's, I'm a sucker for that. But also they let you put like cream and stuff in it. So you can get like a cream in the soda. So it gives it like a different flavor okay and people in utah would call it a dirty soda it's delicious okay but also you can get like red bull inspired drinks or good coffee or they always have so also, that's your spot you like that coffee more than any other place when you get when you and iman go out to get coffee that's where you go yeah how what's the closest uh, dirt, so we don't need to know where it's, you live but closest one is one on serene yeah yeah the one yeah. on serene um but also the starbucks that we have is down the street from us. So if it's something that we need quick, we'll go there because yeah. also they have food. Dutch Bros doesn't really have food, which is a bummer, but they have a list of drinks. The possibilities are endless. Um, but yeah, Dutch Bros. I'm going to tag you in this. Um, but <laughs> today, for my shoe of the day or week or however you want to call it, this has become one of my new favorite shoes. It's one of the most classic shoes of all time. Um, it is Jordan 1 Chicago. Um, this is the Lost and Found that came out at the end of in December of 2022. Um, these shoes are impossible to get at a good price, except that like the lost and founds right now are easier to find. But you know, the other Chicago's ones released in 2015 and 2017 are, is that your favorite colorway? The black and white and uh, red. It's a Chicago colorway. It's just classic. Like this right. is, this is, the you know, shoe. I call it a color sway for a long time. I know. Cause yeah, I know. I know. But so this is, this is the first colorway and shoe that, Nike made for Jordan. Yeah. Um, and I, I had a pair of the OGs. OGs 1985s. Yeah. Uh, I wanted a pair of these shoes. You, I've talked about it for so long. My girlfriend has a pair. How much uh, could I sell that pair for right now? Even if it was used. The 1985. Yeah. Well, most, you, most places don't even sell them. If they have a pair, they're usually so beat up. Excuse me. That nobody will take them and they'll just have them in a, a in display glass. case, not for sale. But an OG 1985, you're talking about like like used and beat up and what they are, like how you have them? He would have been, they, they, it would have been. Because here's the thing, uh, over over 30 or 40 years, they're going to deteriorate. So it's a, wow, it's almost been 40 years since the 1985 was released. How, stop saying that. Whoa, that. whoa. Uh, that hurts whoa. my feelings. It's almost been 40 years since the very first tell, Jordan 1 1985 release. Tell me, ouch. Tell me how much, let me guess. Oh, yo, I, I've seen not a perfect... Don't, don't tell me, don't tell me. Don't. Okay. I'm going to guess. Can I tell you a perfect condition one? Like one that hasn't been worn, what they go for? How would that exist? Perf- not perfect condition, but never worn, still dead stock? People, there's a never worn 1985 shoe? Oh, yeah. That goes for six figures. Okay. So I'm going to guess... Hold on. Uh, let me... Let me size 10. Oh, well, it would have been size nine and a half at the time. Used. Yo, my beard looks great today. Look at that, dude. Woo-hoo. When the beard comes in a little thick, I have old man winter. Okay, you ready? So I had a pair of 1985 nine and a halfs used. Not like I didn't play basketball in them. Just walk around used. So I'm gonna say if brand new they caught their six figures, I'm gonna uh, say right, maybe at a reseller, but right now I'm looking online, they're five figures. Okay. Like on a StockX website. Okay, so I am gonna say my used one would have been seventy five hundred. 
It ranges anywhere from two grand to ten grand. Yeah. You want to know what the brand new one costs? A, a, a brand new spanking new. Nobody's ever my size. Just they're all going to range, but they're eighty-seven thousand dollars, fifty-two thousand dollars. If if I paid fifty-two thousand dollars for a pair of shoes, I would want you to punch me in the face, like directly in the face. That is a pair of shoes, four would, knuckles, and you could do it a couple of times. That's a, that's a pair of shoes I would like. If I bought that because I'm a sneakerhead, and if I had the amount of money, and it would be no repercussions, I would buy it and then just put them in a case and never. I'm wear them. assuming that particular pair is an investment. Yeah, you give it 40 more years and it doubles because Jordan's influence only gets bigger. How do you know? Where is the sneaker game What going? if, what if... If all the sneakers just if, died off and all if, my sneakers were pr- worthless? What if the tall French kid comes over... Wemby? What if Wemby comes over and he, he makes the Wembys? Is that, and that's how you advertise it. It's the Wembys. Here's the thing. And they, and they look and the and you know, he, he, re, he goes and he gets... What were those called? The, the, the kids... Um, the kids like show where the different the twinkle toes that they were different colors Teletubbies yeah so the Wembys could, could you could you name any one of them yeah the red one no not the color their name oh stupid weep beep beep lap up uh, lap up no Iman, lap up's close n- no that's the, that's the sound name. Okay, let me guess. Do you give me give me give me? Do, I, I do have, you know the four? I have one in my mind that Ouch. I that I could I'll just always remember okay. because it's just funny give, to me. Give me the four. Give me the first letters of all four. Of all four, hop hop lap up. That's not it. But you know how I do. I make weird noises and then something comes in. Oh, lop lop actually is pretty close, right? Lop up lop lop sounds. Wemby sounds close too. No, flip flip. Nope. <laughs> What'd you say? <laughs> Sounded like a dog sniffing. Flip, flip, flip. Okay, give me the first letters of all of them. T, T, W. Oh. So it's one Twinkie. of Twinkie. Close. Tweety. No. Twerpy. Closer to Twinkie, but you didn't let me finish. It's okay. two words. Tweety poo. No. Tweety pie. No. Why did I say you were closer with Twinkie and you went away from Twinkie? <laughs> <laughs> what happened there? I Twi- was like, you're closer with Twinkie. Tweety pie. Tweety, Twi- Twi- Tweety poo. <laughs> Twink. Not Twinkie. <laughs> like what? Twinkie. Twi- twinkle. Twinkle. No. Twink. Little star. No. Twinkie do. No. Nope. Give me one. Give me the T. Tell me what that one is. Twinkie. So it'll. Tinky Winky. Tinky Winky. That's, That's the right. one I know. Okay. So give me the other one. The other one starts with. Are they all two letter? Two words? No, no, no. Uh, the other one with Lop Lop that you were close with is two words as well. Starts with an L? Yes. Both of them start with an L. Ooh. That's why you were really close. I know that felt lop lop felt pretty good. I think that's the sound that this one makes. Like lop. how they talk. They go lop lop. Oh, they make noise? What? Did you even watch the Teletubbies with me when I was Maybe. growing up? Maybe. You might have been asleep. It was nap time, probably. Yeah, nap time for you. Yeah. Because I was occupied. Ling lop. No. Look, Ling. It's the same word twice. That's what I thought, lop lop. Whatever you I was you, you said that's what I thought to that last thing you just said. I was like, no, that is uh, not I, right. Okay, I'm gonna do one more guess and then you'll tell me what it is. Link, link. No, you were close. When I say you're close with lop lop, why do you go away from those letters? I don't know. What was it? La la. Oh, that's what I'm saying. You okay. were close. Okay. By the okay. way, here's just a hint for these how these games work yeah. just in life. If I say you're close with one thing, yeah, stick to those letters. Good because idea. Because you just keep going further away from it. Give me the next one. What's the uh, start? With? Starts with a P, and it's only two letters. Poo. Po. There you go. Poe. Poo is three letters, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and the last one starts with a D. You would use this to describe a drunk girl at a bar. A drunk, not so smart girl at a bar. Dingy? No. Dinky? No. Dilla. Did you just have a stroke? <laughs> 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 you don't put a hand up for that one. Delilah? That, that's what you call... No. What? I'm just sounding things out. That a was a drunk girl at a bar? Who's not so smart. D- dopey. That's one of the dwarfs. Mm. Isn't it? Probably. I think so. Dopey? Yeah. Call, call one the, they he's, don't call one of the dwarfs dopey, do they? Yeah, they do. He's the dumb one. Dopey, right? Why are you pointing at him and saying he's because the dumb Matt, one? No, no, no. Matt just nodded his head like I was right. Name the seven dwarves. Ooh, sleepy, dopey. Mm. I don't, I could, 
Angry? I, don't, <laughs> grumpy. <laughs> grumpy. Sleepy, dopey, grumpy, doc. Doc? Oh, the leader. He wasn't the leader. Who the fuck is Doc? Doc the dwarf. From Back to the Future? No. <laughs> wasn't Doc one of the seven dwarves? Uh, I, yeah. I was supposed to watch. We're going to watch Snow White soon. Sleepy, so. dopey, Doc. Angry. Uh, uh, not angry. <laughs> Grumpy. <laughs> drunky. Yeah. No, there wasn't no, Drunky. Dr- <laughs> no. Drunky is what I, drunky is what I call my friends. I'm like Drunky the Eighth yeah, Dwarf. That's what but, I call uh, it. Not Drunky the Dwarf. I mean, you might be able to find somebody. Okay, hold on. How do we not know more than four dwarves? Because Snow White was made in 1940. So it was sleepy, dopey, dark, grumpy, Gr- angry, Brad, Brad Williams. Uh, <laughs> uh, hi, Brad. I was not expecting that. <laughs> uh, uh, we can. We can. Uh, yeah. Oh, you could definitely um, clip that one. I think we're missing three. Uh, drunky, that's how math works. Drunky, stupid. Uh, no, no, that's dopey. There's got to be a hardworking what one. What about a happy one? A happy. happy. Was there happy? There's got to be a hardworking one. By the way, I like how our, our engineer Matt knows all of these. We keep Who, asking him like he's supposed to know him, and he one? does. Who's the hardworking one? Do, 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 do. I ho. We need two more. Worky? Worky. No, that's, I'm that just doesn't saying worky. Sound right, worky. Worky dwarf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, still sounds like we're talking about Brad Williams. <laughs> uh, not worky dwarf. I'm I'm at a loss. Okay. Do you want to know? By the way, are we still going off the? Oh last yeah. What's the, what was the last one? So what's the D? Yep. Another stroke. Try again. Oh, that was this is the drunk girl at a bar. Yes. Stupid one too. And it's not dopey. No. Oh, what's her name? Well, you would call this girl Ditsy, right? But this Teletubby's name is Dipsy with a P. Well, then that was a bad clue. If you would have gotten ditzy, I would have said switch a letter or switch the T, and then I would have helped you out. But you were nowhere fucking close to it. Yeah, you're right. So don't don't, don't make this sound like it's my fault. No, you're you're it's 100% not your fault. Do you fault. remember what the son's character's name was called? The son of who? No, like the son, like the actual son in Teletubbies. Remember the son talked? Nah, dude. I well, don't remember that they made noises. Well, the don't son- they make like a beep, beep, beep noise? Something like that. Yeah. But so, yeah, the son was just the baby's face, so it was son baby. That's creepy as fuck. Very, yeah. Holy shit. Yeah. Na- find me the name of the other two dwarves. There's got to be a clue. Because there, it there's got to be like a worky dwarf. I typed in name name of, and it said the, the seven dwarves right? was the first thing to pop up. So we got... By the way, I also said show me seven, and it shows me five. What the fuck? We got Doc, we got Doc, Sleepy, Dopey, Grumpy... By the way... And the, Brad. No, it's the fifth one. Happy. Happy. By the way, you know what's crazy? You just named those first five in order of how they popped up on my screen. Okay, so that, that was really crazy. So give me a clue for the other two, and then we got to get out of here. Oh, oh, okay. This one, um, you do this a lot when you have allergies. Sneezy. There you go. Fucking, we should play $25,000 Pyramid, you and I. You and I, I'm not going to lie, you and I would fucking murder in a show like that. Yeah, I agree. Like uh, like the best friends game? We would uh, Hit yeah. me with another one. Um, uh, Oh, I have to look up what this word means. I'm sorry. You have to look up what one of the words means for the... Is it worky? No. Hard worky? Okay, the definition of this word is reluctant to draw attention to oneself or shy. Oh, uh, uh, I was going to say shy, but um, um, it ends with an E-Y. Shy-y. No. Uh, it doesn't end with a Y. This oh. one is like doc, where it doesn't end Donkey. in a y. I just said it doesn't end oh. in a Y. By the way, when I say it's like Doc and doesn't end in a Y, why take the word Doc and just add a Y? That was like the exact opposite of what Tell I said. Tell me what the name is. Bashful. Bashful. That sounds like one of the reindeer. Yeah, it kind of does. It doesn't sound like it would be the name of a dwarf. No. Neither does Doc, by the way. But Brad does. Well, Brad I, Brad is the eighth honorable one. Yeah. Obviously. Um, all right. Well, this was a good time. Yeah. Uh, well, hopefully we'll actually get to the things we wanted to talk about next time. But thank you guys so much for being here and listening. Or if you're watching, what thank you, you for watching. T- tell everybody. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm getting into it right now. Okay. Um, ComedianJoshWolf.com for tour dates, tickets, all of your needs to come see us on the road. Um, we already set our dates. But again, if you need them, ComedianJoshWolf.com. Um, Josh Wolf Comedy on all platforms. TikTok, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, wherever you need them. That's where he is. Uh I am uh, Jake underscore Wolf on Instagram. It's Jake Wolf on TikTok. Um, 
Youthful Wolf on Twitch. I'm really going to try and get back into a streaming while I'm here on the weekdays uh, for a couple hours a day. Um, so come join, come have some fun. Um, I think that's all we got. We already did our plug for our dates. Yeah. Yeah. The UK tour, um, those dates will go up, I think, next week. Cool. Um, but that is, uh, looks like October. Late October and early November, I think is what we're looking at. Yeah, October is UK and then early November is Europe. Yeah. Excuse me. Um, I, I'm pretty impressed with how your stand up or your storytelling has been coming, dude. So good luck. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I think it. you're doing a great job. I appreciate it. I am going to, in the near future, make a decision on where I want to shoot my next special. So if you have any suggestions and uh, you want me to come to your city and shoot the special. What about Boston? Go back to your hometown. Um, I've already done this hour there. Mm. What hour? Where haven't you done this hour? Yeah, it's a good question. Well, that but here's might the thing, be a yeah, smarter way to do it. Yeah. Actually, I think, it, I, think more, I think... I think your hour, though, is so interchangeable because you have so many jokes that you can flip in and out that you've done before that I think you could still create a fresh new hour yeah, but got to do the giddy up. Yeah. And for those of you who don't know about that, if you know, you know. If you don't, come to a show and see what's up. Um, so I think, honestly, if I'm thinking about major cities, Seattle feels... Yeah, because you're in Spokane. I, I, I haven't done it in Seattle. Well, that's where your career started, too. Yeah, it might be fun to go back and do it there. Yep. All right, Seattle, I'm looking at you. Yeah. And I'll be there, but uh, if you knew me from when I used to visit there, you don't. So we'll see you there. Um, I don't know what that means. It's like if anybody who thinks they know me, like when I used to go visit up there with the oh, got it, got other it, family. It, that's it. what I'm saying. If you know me, you don't. Um, I think that's it for us here. Um, love you. Good one. Love you, dude. Um, we will see you guys again shortly. Um, tell somebody you love them and do something good for somebody today. All right. Be I, safe. I do like that you say that at the end of every podcast. Yeah, you know. It's like uh, it's like RuPaul's. She finishes every show with, "If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna love somebody else?" Can I get an amen? And all the girls go, "Amen!" And then they all dance, and the show ends. But we don't do any of that. So <laughs> that's all I got. Later, everybody. See you later. Everybody. <laughs>